And now, please welcome to the stage, legendary singer-songwriter and troubadour for our troubled times, Dakota Kirk. My name is Dakota Kirk, and I'll be your host this evening. Now, what lies ahead is still unknown. My job is to keep it that way. But hell, all that nothingness takes up its own sort of space, I suppose. Before we get to all that nothingness, I'd like to share a couple songs with y'all. That is, uh, if you don't mind. See, like many a music man before me, I've Spent a fair amount of time traveling across this country, over sparkling highways and dirty back roads, from the mountains to the sea, and darn near everywhere in between. And whether I'm headed north, south, uh, east, or west, I can always count on the fact that there'll be somebody else on that road, hot-tailing it in the other direction. Now, all these folks heading every which way has got me to think it. Do any of us really know where the hell we're going? Of course, can't speak for any of y'all, but I've never been quite sure if I was headed in the right direction. But more and more, I'm beginning to think that it doesn't matter all that much, that as long as you got your hands on the wheel and a song in your heart, well, you'll get to where you're going just fine. Mm. Drive. And I know the answer is probably right in front of me, but it can be so hard to find. There's no directions, there's no signs to guide me on the highways of my life. Freedom is a steering wheel. The horizon in your own windshield Memories in the rear view mirror Might be closer than they appear But freedom is a steering shock and disturb you. People always ask me, they say, Dakota, does it really need to be such a 
cold world out there, we all just put a little light out in the dark. And I always say the same thing, that in the world's as cold and as dark as you want to make it. Sometimes just living one day or the next is about the best rebellion you can offer. Shit. I think I've seen just about as much suffering as I have joy in this life, but I don't intend on keeping a tally. This next one's an old favorite. In the twilight glow, I see her blue eyes crying in the rain. And when we kiss goodbye and parted, I knew we'd never. Meet again. Love is like a dying ember. Only memories remain. And through the ages, I'll remember. Blue eyes crying in the rain Someday when we meet up yonder Just a sliver of your attention with me tonight. But like all things, it's time old Dakota gets moving on. In the meantime, prepare yourselves for a phantasmagoria of power, violence, and mystery. Whatever the hell that means. Well, it's like they say. If I bothered to show up, the check's already been cashed. And so am I. So I go, but perhaps we'll meet again down that old dusty trail they call life. <laughs> this one's dedicated to the Zodiac Cat and also to paranoid fantasies everywhere. About this, David. Oh, come on, Betty Lou. It's just a little drive. We'll have the car back before my dad even notices it's gone. Okay. And you said you wanted to get out to the country anyway, right? I did. Right! And here we are! It's just us, the road, and the moon. You're right. It's just. What? Oh, you know, since Melody got pregnant, I guess my parents can be real stiffs about letting me go out, especially with a boy. And if I get into any more trouble, then... Hey, 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 listen. 
nothing bad is gonna happen. Like I said, we're gonna be back home before anyone even notices we're gone. Okay. And if anyone gives us trouble, they'll have me to deal with. Oh? Yeah. <laughs> and what would you do? Well, I was almost made captain of the wrestling team, Betty Lou. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I thought Roger was captain of the wrestling team. He is. <clears throat> and wasn't Dale captain before that? Before he broke his leg trapping rattlesnakes? A very unfortunate incident. And at the last meet, you got beat so bad the referee had to stop the match. Okay. <laughs> well, you look like you could cry after. Hey, you know, that kid might go to the Olympics next year. Look, I beat you at arm wrestling. Okay! <laughs> The point, Betty Lou, is that you have nothing to worry about. I would never let anything happen to you. And I promise there's a very good reason we're driving to Lake Herman. Oh? Maybe. Really? We're almost there. Oh, David, just wait till I tell Sharon she's gonna flip. Oh, Betty Lou. <laughs> I know these last few months we've been sneaking around together. Uh-huh. And I know you're probably tired of telling your parents that you're going to the malt shop with friends. <laughs> <laughs> they probably think I'm addicted to malt by now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Betty Lou, you're such a gas. David? Yes, Betty Lou? I sure think you're swell. Oh, I think this is it here. <clears throat> it's dark. Betty Lou, we've been spending a lot of time together. Uh-huh. And I know that you know that I think you're swell too. Yeah. So, I've been thinking. Uh-huh. About you and me. What? It's just so dark, is all. Oh, oh, um, right, geez, um, how's this? David? Yes, Betty Lou? Who is that? Um... It's probably just somebody playing us for a goof. I'll bet it's Roger. I'll bet the guys are in the trees. Did you tell anyone we were coming here? Oh, no. I guess not. <laughs> well, aren't you gonna do something? Uh, yeah. Sure. I'll, yeah, I'll do something about it. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, I don't think that's Roger. Here we go. This will show up. David, I'm scared. Listen, Betty Lou, like I said, I'm not going to let anything happen to you. Now, I'm going to go outside of the car, and I'm just going to let this guy know that I mean business, okay? Maybe you shouldn't. I'll be right back. Hey. All right, now. Fun's over. So, it's time for you to go ahead and get on out of here, okay? Okay. 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 All right! Get lost! Call. All right, now. I've had just about enough of this. No more silly business. We've all had a good gag, and now it's time for you to just go ahead and get. Get! Now. Now! Or up! You want to just stand there and waste my time? Huh? Probably just Roger playing us for a gag. I don't care. Let's get out of here. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez.
Sorry. Okay. I'm here for a reason tonight, Betty Lou. Because there's something I've been wanting to ask you. Yes? Will you be my girl? Oh, David, I would love to. <laughs> Maybe tonight wasn't such a bad night after all. shooting in that area. May I have your name and location, please? You'll find the kids in a white car. I also killed those kids last year. They were shot with a 9mm Luger. What is your name, sir? 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 known and forever unknown. And in our unknowing, we know what these two don't know. That they can be whatever it is we need them to be. Dear sir, I will keep the appointment that I made, but please be sure and send men that you can depend on. I'm not afraid to die like a man, fighting, but I would not like to be killed like a coward unarmed. I've heard that you will give $1,000 for my body, <laughs> which, as I can understand, it means alive, as witness. But tell me, Governor, if I deliver my own body, will you deliver that same amount to me? I'm afraid I might be poisoned or shot through a window at night. Bet you can arrange that all right. I was there when Mr. Chapman was murdered, and I know who did it. So please send me an answer. I have no wish to fight anymore. Indeed, I have not raised an arm since your proclamation. Please excuse me for having so much to say. Yours truly, William H. Bonnie. A postscript. 
The papers call me Kid Antrim, but Antrim is not my name. I want you to print this cipher on the front page of your paper. In it, you will find my identity. <laughs> well, ain't that something? <laughs>
Stars are stars. Sure. Ain't no feet in the scarecrow! <laughs> I see. The sweetheart routine.
<laughs> My next Ride work. Ride rain. self Get yourself a horse. <laughs> Yesterday, Talking to the wind King is all. Out to Billy all the Man. time. Slayer. Uh, to prove I killed the man. What? what? <laughs> I, want you uh, I don't blame you for writing me as you have. You print page. Paper. Reveal your secret. No! It was a day covered in shallow rain. Heck of a day, nothing doing. Been driving the buzzards up these past few weeks. So, I ventured on down to the general store where I met and deliberated a man about Nobel's extra dynamite to scare the piss out of a band of rabble rousers. Bring a cave in and murder them all if it need be. Okay. Murder every last goddamn son of a bitch. Right. If it need be, I said. Yeah. Raise him! Do it! Reach for the sky! Okay, okay, okay! Well, what have we here? Lucky Lord? Looky here at this one. Well, I have moved the stone and shown it the light. Wait, what? I can still smell it on you. That's the stuff. Open it up. Take a look at it. Poke around. What is it that you see? What's that wiggling around over there? What snakes are stirring in those darkened corners? Look at them. Chewing on their own tails. It's safe on the outside here. But what waits for us at the bottom? I am out here with you. It's uh, time we shift things up. Yes, I like the sound of that. <laughs> yes, I like the sound of that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like the sound of that. <laughs> yes, I like the sound of that. Yes, I like the sound of that. Tell me. What? That thing you want to tell me. Okay. Now? <laughs> now? <laughs> now. No. Oh. Okay. The interior remains intact, but all of the outer character is gone. Gone there, don't it go. Look at it drift and fly away, away. Where does it land? Where did you land? Just a sycamore seed, searching for the wind. 
looking to take root. Looking at the steel of your hair roots. Those are nice. I think I'll take those. Those are mine now. Am I doomed to live in terror? Then what? I didn't think about it any longer. You get used to it. You get used to anything. Uh huh. It's like you could hear it and you knew it was there. But then one day it wasn't. But it still was. I see. I knew what it meant. It was there, but it wasn't there. You was there, but you wasn't there. <laughs> yes. Tell me. What? Well, tell me that thing you want to tell me. No, I don't think I should. Okay. Who are we supposed to be? <laughs> Sometimes breaking the thing fixes the thing. down like the jaws of a wolf. The wind lashed flames tore through the house while the roar and cackle, the thud of falling timbers, were like crazy echoes to the barks of heated rifles. Almost, I could feel sorry for the men trapped in that final room. Almost. Until I recollected the reason for their being there. A crew of killers, ruthless, implacable. A thirst for blood as any vulture. Hired guns to ambition and avarice. Wild men, bought by promises never intended to be kept. Mad dogs. When my uncle Oleg had been killed by the roving squad, my father knew that we would soon be under pursuit, so we stole away to the mountainside to make means of what we could, which wasn't much. 
It did not take long for roles to be established. My brother Stocky took command of the scripture and it was my greatest fear that he would outlive my father and rule our family as hard as he had ruled his habits. That was more unforgiving than I was accustomed to. Willem was a natural outdoorsman and hunter. He trained his body to withstand the cold for nighttime prey. And I rarely went to sleep without the sound of him delicately breaking twigs in search of dinner. When he hunted well, we ate well. But winter was hard and brought with it the first of what would become our hungry years. A frost wiped out the rye crop, reducing our bounty to just one seed, and it was my responsibility to nurture that seed. The next year took mother, and most of the cooking and cleaning and nursing fell to me as well. One night, Willem creeps to me while I'm sleeping and whispers in my ear, I am leaving now. I have left you some rations just beyond our camp, but they are only for you. Eat them only when no one else is around. I have marked a tree. You will need to climb several branches, but you will see it. of my shaggy hair from in front of my eyes, and as I <laughs> reflexively yelled, he pressed his finger against my lips hard and said, Quiet. <laughs> he sounded like the devil only in that instance of restrained silence. And then he was gone. And for many, many years, I heard twigs breaking at night as I went to sleep and thought he had returned home. But it was often only a wolf or a fox or nothing at all. Stocky's death was less mysterious. One day, while washing my father's patchwork pants at the river, I heard him screaming like a bear caught in a trap. I ran to see if I could help. When I found him, he had fallen into a crevasse, with his leg broken through the skin. In a deep sliver of marsh where he seemed to disappear almost entirely, I could see his eyes peeking through the moss, crying. I got our father who, believing nothing could be done, did my brother the mercy of lowering a hunting knife to him to finish the deed before the animals did. It was almost nighttime. We heard howling as we left him there. Years passed, or something like it. Stocky held the task of keeping track of the days, and with him gone, neither of us could navigate the differences. So it was many, many years. Probably. <laughs> I say that because father grew old, and eventually died. I say that because I grew very old and eventually died as well. And I'm
my born to die to lay this body down and must my Oh, yeah. 
long ago, searching for the very souls whom already been sold. Arise, arise, he cried so loud in a voice without restraint. Come out, ye gifted kings and queens, and hear my sad complaint. No martyr is among you now to hear you on your own. So go on your way accordingly, but know you're not alone. What do you want, Billy? To be a cowboy. <laughs> what do you want, Billy? To be a good cowboy. <laughs> what do you want, Billy? To be the meanest son of a bitch you ever laid eyes on. What do you want, Billy? To be the coldest hothead this side of the Mississippi. What do you want, Billy? To ride my horse. On the golden plains eternal. What do you want, Billy? To come to rest on a warm, soft bed. What do you want, Billy? To sleep in her yellow hair. What do you want, Billy? To put my bones in the dirt. What do you want, Billy? <laughs> to become the dirt. What do you want, Billy? To be remembered exactly as I am.
the vulgar in rock and walrus. I drink to the maidens, the happiest of days. My picture is posted from Texas to Maine. And women and riding and riding's my game. Texas Star. You are now how old? 21. When is your birthday? November 23rd. On that lap, I'll be 22. You were reported as saying, as adding to that phrase, if I make it, when asked that question before. Well, sometimes I'm more confident than at others. And you feel all right now? Yes, I feel okay now. When you rejected Governor Houston's offer of an amnesty, were you aware of the possibility that your life would continue the way it has? Well, I don't know. Charlie told me then that I was a fool not to grab all I could out of old Houston. But what the hell? It didn't mean too much anyway. Houston was offering me protection from the law, but at that time the law had no quarrel with me. It seemed rather silly. But you were wanted for cattle rustling. Yes, but, well, let me put it this way. I could only be arrested if they had proof. Definite proof, not just stories. Here, Mr. Bonnie withdrew a black cigarette, lit it, and grinned charmingly. Then he retreated behind one of his enigmatic half-smiles, a smile which was on the verge of one. These smiles of Billy the Kid are well known and have become legendary among his friends in this area. Sheriff Garrett has an explanation for this. Billy has a denture system which is quite prominent. Buck teeth he was the paper call. So that 
Even when he has no intention of smiling, his teeth force his mouth into a half grin. Because of this, people are always amazed at his high spirits in the time of stress. <laughs> when Billy was 18, a man named John Rapsey, or Shithead as he was known affectionately afterward, broke Billy's nose with a bottle. Billy fell unconscious and Rapsey escaped. Charlie, who was with him, fed him some tequila to help him forget about the pain. Billy never got that nose fix for another three days because Charlie, accompanying him on the tequila, also got drunk and forgot all about the nose. As a result, when he finally got to Sumner to get it fixed, his breathing channels, or whatever, were clogged. After that, he never breathed through his nose again, but breathed by sucking the air in through his mouth, or through his teeth, it seemed. If you were near him when he was breathing heavy, when running or excited or in a gallop, you could hear this high-pitched hissing sound. It's quite loud. <laughs> But right now, you threaten to kill him if you escape this hanging. When I escape, yes. Why? Well, I've been through all this before. Two wrongs make a right, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Right. 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 Do you have a lawyer? Hey, slip me a gun and I will. <laughs> Don't print that. Mr. Bonnie. <laughs> or may I call you Billy? No. Mr. Bonnie, do you believe in God? No. Well, I mean I did for a long time. In a superstitious kind of way. Same way I believe in luck, for instance. Do you worry about what will happen after death? Well, I try to avoid it. No, I suppose not. They'll just put you in a box and you'll be there forever. There'll be nothing else. Though... The one thing I wish is that I could hear what they had to say about me afterward. I think I'd really like that. I suppose you think that's simple-minded. Are you happy? I don't know whether I'm happy or not. Do you think you will last in people's memories? I'll be with the world till she dies. That's rather good. Yes, it is. Sandy. Oh, no, I, I wasn't. I'm not. All he meant was... Applications? For work? Right. That's good. That is good. Good. Is there anything I can do to help? Actually, Don, there is something you can do to help. Lay it on me. Stick out your tongue. What? Your tongue. Stick it out. <laughs> no. I had long drives. Stick out your tongue, Don. I'm not sticking my tongue out. <laughs> Hard to find the place. Come on, just, come on, stick your tongue out. It's a big deal. Just stick, uh, stick your tongue out and hold it, Don. There, right there. Just hold it. <laughs> <laughs> Been licking those things all day. <laughs> Can't stand the taste. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. Okay. Can I make well, you fellas some tea? I was just about to put the pot on. Oh, hell, that's no, not no, necessary. No, 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 that's all right. I was putting it on anyway. Well, all right. You came long enough. At least I can do. Thank you. So, what the hell brings you to my neck um, of the woods? Yeah, so about that. We heard about your job. Look, we didn't want to pester. We just thought we'd drive out here and see how you're doing. We were sorry to hear it. Can I show you my watch? Uh, no. Let me get it. Very nice. That's, that's a nice watch. Why, thank you. Did okay. You here all alone? Did you see the name of the brand? Right there in the face of the watch. Uh, I see it. What is it? You know we didn't come out here to talk about a watch. What brand is it? You know what brand it is. Humor me. Zodiac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We just wanted to make sure that you're doing okay. What do you think a watch like that costs? I, I don't know. That you don't do anything silly. How do you know I haven't? What? Done something. Silly. <laughs> How much do you think a watch like that costs? Go on, guess. I, I don't know, maybe 50 bucks. 50 bucks? You know, I could write you a letter <laughs> if you need, if you need help getting back on your feet. 50 bucks? Uh, it's only a guess. Well... I guess old mom's not as big a liar as I thought. I know a place that's hiring. It's machine work. It's fine work. I'm afraid she went cheap for my birthday. It's a nice gift. I know the shift manager. So what, Don? You come out here to make sure the old boy hasn't lost his marbles? Is that it? No. No. I think I'm going to set up in a bush somewhere and pluck all the little darlings off one by one as they come bouncing off the bus? No, no. Nothing like that. You know, Don, it's... Why do you show up here today? You, you were just on my mind. Oh, yeah. yeah? It's good to see you so well. Who was that girl we went to school with? Um, long black hair up in a hive. You had a thing for her, junior year. Helen Stapleton. Helen Stapleton. Yes. Well, I ran into Helen a few weeks ago in Vallejo, which was a surprise. I, I was surprised to see her. And I'd say it was a surprise for her seeing me as well, but uh, I don't think she ever recognized me. She didn't say she did. But I made sure she saw me. <laughs> she was driving to Lincoln. I uh, drove up beside her, flashing my lights, waving my arms, you know, pointing at her uh, front tire there, the, the driver's side, just driven and waving with my arms at something. What's the matter? So she pulls over on the side of the road. I get out and I say, uh, Howdy, ma'am. Uh, sorry, ma'am, but your tire there, I saw it all wiggling left and right. Didn't want you to hurt yourself or hurt anyone else for that matter this evening. And if you got a lug wrench, I could tighten it up for you. So she says to me now, she says, uh, uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure. So I assure her, I say to her, now I say, uh, now don't worry, I got one in the trunk. So get out, I walk around, uh, I put on some gloves. Now I keep the gloves in the trunk because I don't like the smell of grease on my hands if I have to do some unexpected car repair. So I put on the gloves, I take the blood wrench out of the trunk, and uh, by this time it's pretty dark. And I, um, I get down there, and I I take a good look at the wheel. <laughs> I bang around it a bit, uh, adjust a few things, and uh, damn, by that point, I didn't realize really there really was something. And it seemed it was beyond fixing a simple manual lug wrench. So 
I did the right thing. And I offered to give her a ride myself. What do you think of that, Don? No matter I think of you, don't hurt me. Please don't hurt me. something or just to give me the eyeball. Are you a man who likes his Caesar? His jam? His what? Jam. Do you like it? Oh, the taste of it. Sweet jelly. I uh, don't reckon I ever had it. Well, that's okay. I always keep a jammy person for an occasion such as this. Me mum always told me, you want something from a man? Best way to get it is through his intestine. The best way through his intestine is with mummy's sweet peach and honey jam. You ain't from around here, is you? Is anyone from anywhere, Ben, really? Don't know many from a jail cell, that's for certain. Mm. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm afraid you have me right. I'm very much not from around here, but I am here. Mm. And so is you. I've been here a while. Let's say I'm invested in this place. And it would appear that you have impeded on this investment, son. Would you like a biscuit? It's got them jellies on it. It sure do. Put a little more on. You got it. Son is punishable by death in this particular neck of the woods. Your neck? My neck. Of the woods. 
My neck, yes, but it could mean yours. Uh-huh. Your neck, I mean. Crooked. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Now, it did take a certain amount of, 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 of guts, shall we say. Yes, a certain amount of intestinal fortitude. Don't get me wrong. Dumb as all hell. Dumb in a bag of cats, but... Dumb guts is better than no guts. I will give you that. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, that'll be it then. I got a long day of waiting, waiting for me. <laughs> Not just quite yet, Mr. Bunny Billy Biscuits. I may have use for a man like yourself. You see, there's a man or two that'd be just as pleased as peach pie if my throat was slit ear to ear. And well, I reckon I just assume keep my neck unslit if that's what I was saying to you. And if in the process of keeping my neck unslitted, I should find some other necks, in fact, slitted. <laughs> or punctured. Blown away, or well, what are you? Well, I reckon they'd be just as well any damn hour. Do you get what I'm getting at? I get it. Good. <laughs> oh, I was hoping you'd say that. Oh. I, I, uh, I got a little gift for you. Swing it. 